Hello, my name is David Jonas, and as chair of the chemistry department, I welcome you to the University of Colorado at Boulder's 2021 Department of Chemistry Virtual Commencement Recognition Ceremony. Today, we recognize the achievements of our graduates along with their families and friends who have helped them along the way. Before our ceremony starts, I would like to recognize the parents of our graduates. Raising a CU graduate is a significant accomplishment. We are all grateful to you and share in your pride in your graduate today. The chemistry graduates we are honoring today are joining a distinguished group. CU chemistry graduates have found that volatile organic compounds from personal care products now exceed those from motor vehicles in American cities. Develop the red phosphors in LED displays and lighting and invented the adhesive in post-it notes. A year ago, one of our graduates developed a new lipid coating process that shaved eight days off the production time for the Moderna vaccine. And our atmospheric chemists worked to convince public health agencies that COVID-19 is mainly transmitted by aerosols, which are the size of cigarette smoke larger than the virus particles that transmit measles and smaller than the droplets that transmit flu. Did you read the article about aerosol transmission in Time Magazine? It was written by Jose Jimenez of our faculty. This past year, our graduates and faculty have saved lives. Given the accomplishments of our graduates, it is no wonder that the CU Chemistry Program is recognized as one of our nation's best. This recognition for a relatively small program is possible because the University of Colorado is a special place and it attracts special people. A year ago, our students rose to the sudden challenges of mid-semester upheaval and remote learning. Today, we celebrate them as graduates. Our graduates are now certified to the world as scientists. Among scientists, chemists are a breed apart. Two years ago, psychology and design researchers developed a new font to aid learning. They called it sans forgetica, mock Latin for without forgetting. In carefully controlled studies, they found that it aided comprehension in every subject except chemistry. For every student who has completed a thesis, their advisor will provide us with a translation of the thesis title so that we understand what the thesis is about. As you will hear, chemists are poised to address unique challenges faced by our society today. If you or your graduate struggled along the path to graduation, know that some of the graduates whose accomplishments I highlighted earlier needed help too. Today, I want to encourage all of our graduates to contribute to society in ways that use your unique aspirations, skills, and abilities. Our world needs you. Before we recognize our graduates, I would like to recognize the dedicated departmental staff who have helped them along the way. In particular, 
Ann McWilliams has helped our undergraduates. Matt Bone helped our graduate students and organized this ceremony. Director of Advanced Laboratories, Dr. Molly Larson, will tell you about what our undergraduates have accomplished this year. And Director of Organic Chemistry Laboratories, Dr. Jackie Richardson, will serve as our commencement marshal. And now it is time to recognize our graduates. Congratulate Dr. Arub Abdel Hamid on her successful defense of her PhD dissertation entitled Speciation and Transformation of Reduced Nitrogen in the Atmosphere, a Laboratory and Field Investigation. To provide some context to her work, human production of food and energy is dramatically transformed the global nitrogen cycle. While this has had untold positive impacts on society, there have also been negative impacts, such as degraded air quality and damaged ecosystems. In an effort to reduce these negative impacts, recent policies have curbed the emissions of oxidized forms of nitrogen. In contrast, reduced nitrogen is largely uncontrolled, and as a result, we are currently experiencing a shift in the regime of atmospheric nitrogen chemistry. In her dissertation work, Aru performed ambient measurements in Oklahoma and laboratory experiments at the University of Eastern Finland to constrain how this new regime of nitrogen speciation alters our understanding of atmospheric composition and chemistry. In addition to providing new chemical insights, particularly into how aging by ammonia influences the composition and volatility of secondary organic aerosol, Arub also pushed the boundaries of the analysis techniques. Arub brings enthusiasm and her positive energy to every project that she undertakes. It was a pleasure working with her, and I think I can speak for the entire group when I say that I miss her energy and enthusiasm at our weekly group meetings. A well-earned and deserved congratulations, Arub. Good luck with all your future endeavors. Hello, my name is Matthias Weber, and I have had the pleasure of being research advisor of Curtis Beinborn during his PhD work. Curtis came to Boulder from Western Carolina University, where he had done undergraduate research on electrochemistry and metal nanomaterials. He joined my group in 2015, and in the following years, he took a fledgling experiment and uh, turned it into a platform for a new project area. Curtis graduated in the fall of 2020 with a thesis titled Spectroscopy of Electronic States in Organic and Nanocrystalline Materials Under High Pressure. How high is high pressure? Well, in the case of Curtis' work, it goes up to 30,000 atmospheres. In fact, some of the experiments he ran were at up to 100,000 atmospheres. At these pressures, crystalline materials can change their crystal structure and their behavior under irradiation with light. These changes carry information on optical and electronic material properties. This is a fundamental research area, but the understanding from this kind of work is important to optimize such materials for applications. Curtis worked with cesium lead halide perovskite. And the nanocrystals of, with, of this material are very promising for solar energy conversion. You can see an artist's rendition of their crystal structure here in the background. Another set of experiments was on rubrine, an organic semiconductor, which shows an effect called upconversion, in which several low energy light particles or photons are converted into a single photon at higher energy. This is an interesting effect with several possible applications, and Curtis' work allows us to understand the mechanism for this effect in rubric. Fortunately, we were able to retain Curtis' talents at CU Boulder, and he is now director of the Keck Lab and Clean Room facility at Jilla. Dr. Beinborn, congratulations on your excellent work. I have very much enjoyed our work together, and I look forward to many more years of collaboration. Alexa Carollo's PhD thesis title is Two-Dimensional Electronic Spectroscopy of the Base Plate in Green Photosynthetic Bacteria. Green photosynthetic bacteria 
are low pond scum that survive by harvesting energy from sunlight for photosynthesis. It's dark in the muck at the bottom of the pond, so they collect photons from the sun with amazing efficiency, far more efficiently than anyone knows how to. Their primary antenna has a million chlorophylls and transfers the photon energy to a base plate with a thousand chlorophylls, which transfers the energy to a smaller antenna before the chemistry starts. This all happens fast. Alexa used femtosecond lasers with pulses a few millionths of a billionth of a second long to excite electrons in the base plate. She measured how a photon of light at each excitation wavelength, the first dimension, altered the spectrum of the base plate at all detection wavelengths, the second dimension, and plotted this as a 2D spectrum that looks like a topographic map. She recorded 2D spectra with different time delays between excitation and detection to reveal how the energy from light moves around in the base plate. We don't know all of the molecular details of how the base plate works yet, but Alexa's experiments have revealed a great deal about how the most efficient light harvesting system on the planet works. Congratulations, Alexa. Hi, my name is Niels Damrauer. I'm a professor in chemistry, and I wanna congratulate Izzy Lotke on becoming Dr. Izzy Lotke. Um, and uh, I'm very proud uh, to have been able to work with him. And I'm proud that he reached this, this milestone in his academic career. Izzy works in a field called photoredox catalysis. So catalysis is catalyzing chemical reactions. Um, redox involves oxidation and reduction steps or loss or gain of electrons. And then the photo part involves light. So the idea is to use light that interacts with certain systems to catalyze transformations. And Izzy's had to do uh, a lot of spectroscopic work in the time domain, meaning he uses lasers to study how fast certain reactions occur. And then he also builds tools to study how efficiently they occur. And he's really made a, a, a key study of an initial step in a type of photocatalysis that involves polymerization reactions. And he's figured out very carefully how an initial step um, involving a reduction event occurs and how efficiently in important systems, uh, technologically important systems. And he's mastered the spectroscopy at a very high level. And he's had to build important tools that moved our group beyond what we could do before. And so I'm indebted to him for that. Izzy is an incredible mentor to other group members, uh, other graduate students, but also undergraduates in my lab. Um, he uh, gives so much of his time and his um, knowledge to other people. Uh, he's incredibly concerned about the safety of the group. He's an incredible group citizen. And then finally, Izzy's a, a master teacher. He taught wonderfully in, in classes within the department. He helped develop um, in our, uh, uh, general chemistry laboratory tools that we taught to majors some years ago. And he's gonna take on these skills um, in teaching that he inherently has and really develop that in the next steps of his career as he goes on to a postdoc in teaching at Fort Lewis College. So I'm pleased to, um, to honor Izzy today and um, I wish him the best going forward. Hi, this is Steve George. I would like to congratulate Tyler Myers on the completion of his PhD thesis. Uh, Tyler's graduate uh, career has been a real adventure. Uh, Tyler started out working on atomic layer etching, but quickly found out that when he tried to etch particles, he also converted particles to something else. And so he ended up this project uh, working on uh, 
trying to determine how conversion works in atomic layer processing, which turned out to be a really wonderful study that was just recently published. Um, after conversion, after the conver conversion product ended, Tyler started a new project where he was using molecular layer deposition to code particles. Uh, this, was a temp uh, this was a project where we were trying to put a polymer coating on polymers in order to act as a time release for the release of a pharmaceutical agent. But we were, we were, we were really never uh, supposed to admit that. Uh, that project gave uh, Tyler the opportunity to build a new reactor and, uh, and he demonstrated that he could do that, putting the all organic polymers on the pharmaceuticals at low temperature. But then the funding for that project ran out and Tyler came, in to, came on to a new project uh, where he was using atomic layer deposition to smooth surfaces. Now this the goal of this project was to make the, 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 part, the surfaces smoother so we could get higher reflectivity uh, optical mirrors. Uh, and, and this project was really very nice because it really kind of opened up the area of atomic layer deposition for optics and will lead to many applications of ALD smoothing for higher reflectivity uh, mirrors. Um, while Tyler was doing all these different projects, um, he was also working at the tech transfer office as an intern. And uh, he worked both at the CU and the, um, the Anschutz uh, Medical Campus tech transfer office, assessing uh, technology and working with them to evaluate patent applications. And in addition, Tyler spent an internship at a think tank up in Washington, uh, where he got to see firsthand uh, the real professionals that, that uh, do this thing, where they look at technology and try to determine whether it should be licensed or even when, where they, whether there should be a new company uh, being developed because of the technology. So, so Tyler really has had a very diverse uh, PhD career, and he's developed a, a unique skill set which is both involved experimental work in the lab as well as his work in, with the tech transfer. And so uh, with this skill set, he's going forward. And so what I'd like to say to Tyler is good job and gr good luck. During the past few years, I have been fortunate to have Wyatt Zagorek Marx as a graduate student in my group. Wyatt came to us from the University of Utah, where he had been working on research in a biological chemistry program. At first glance, he changed the direction of his research interests quite drastically when he joined my group in 2016. Instead of working with proteins in buffer solutions, he prepared molecules in a vacuum apparatus at cryogenic temperatures, just a few tens of degrees above absolute zero, and then shot lasers at them. However, research can have a funny way of making an overlap with previous scientific interests, and after some very nice early work, on relatively small molecules, he began experiments on biochromophores. These molecules are light absorbers in biological systems, such as hemoglobin, which gives blood its red color, or chlorophyll, which makes the leaves of plants green and plays a role in light harvesting for photosynthesis. Wyatt studied the chromophore of the green fluorescent protein, or GFP, which is the fundamental unit that makes the jellyfish you can see in the background glow under illumination with blue or UV light. Green fluorescent protein and similar proteins are used extensively as fluorescent biomarkers. To tune and optimize these molecules, it is important to understand their intrinsic photophysics, which Wyatt studied using the techniques I mentioned earlier. Wyatt also studied biliverdin and protoporphyrin, which are two other prototypical molecules, and his thesis is titled cryogenic spectroscopy of anionic biochromophores. Wyatt defended his thesis in April, but he will stay a few months longer in my group where he finishes building and testing a new experimental apparatus. He has been a great person to work with, and I am happy that I don't have to let him go just yet. Congratulations on excellent work, Dr. Zagorek Marx.
Hi, my name is Molly Larson and I am the Undergraduate Advanced Lab Director in the Chemistry Department here at CU Boulder. I manage the lab classes your graduate took their final year or two while earning their degree here at CU. I want to say a few words and take some time to celebrate the 2021 Chemistry Department graduating class. Let me tell you a bit about what the chemistry graduates did while they were here at CU. Chemistry is a very challenging major in what has been called the central science connecting so many others. Students learn to make interesting molecules, how to predict what is going to happen when different substances are mixed together, and how to analyze complicated data to learn something about the world. All of the graduates in this audience use their knowledge of how light interacts with molecules to figure out properties of these molecules, such as how long their bonds are and how fast the atoms in them vibrate. Several of the students use specialized software that allowed them to visualize how atoms move in materials. Every graduate in this audience also developed an experiment and performed it. In normal years, chemistry majors at CU designed projects using scientific instruments they had learned about in the previous year to determine how much of a certain compound is in different substances. This year, with COVID restrictions, we were not able to do these projects in the same way. Instead, students were given sensors, which measured, measured carbon dioxide and small particles that were 2.5 or 10 microns in diameter. They used these sensors to design COVID-inspired COVID projects, where carbon dioxide levels and the particulates were used as a proxy for the aerosols and saliva particles that are exhaled in human breath and which are largely known to be uh, responsible for the spread of COVID. They use these sensors to measure CO2 and particle, par particulate levels in different locations in and around our community. Our chemistry majors then use these results along with an internationally recognized model developed by Professor Jimenez from this department to determine the likelihood of being affected with COVID in these different situations. The experimental ideas these students came up with and the results they found were amazing. You should ask the graduate you know in this audience about their project. We had some students look at the risk of spreading COVID in a car with windows open, windows closed, and with the air conditioning on or off. Some students looked at how effectively CO2 on, particulates, CO2 on particulates spread between the rooms in an apartment, uh, examining how much, of, how much it mattered when the ventilation system was running compared to when it was not. Student look, students looked at the COVID risk in different common locations where people tend to go, such as restaurants, gyms, public transportation, and grocery stores. They determined that the periodic break time implemented by a rec center to clear the room from the virus is likely not sufficient to actually mitigate the, mitigate the risk. They measured how breath dilutes away from a person to evaluate the six foot social distancing rule. These experiments were well thought out, interesting, and really well implemented. And the students did, they did these experiments very independently. Their laboratory teaching assistants were available to help them analyze and understand their data, but the TAs were not there to watch them collect the data and tell them when they were doing something wrong. And they rose to the occasion to achieve very interesting results. We had never tried anything like this before in, pre in previous years, and so there was a lot of trial and error in these experiments, like there will be always be when doing science, but there was also a lot of success. I hope that all the graduates here are as proud as proud of and happy with their results as I, Professor DeGao, and the TAs are. You really impressed us with your abilities. I hope you use the skills and real world, real world problem solving experience you obtained during this project and in the rest of your classes to solve some of the important problems in the world because the world needs good scientists right now. What you all accomplished in getting this degree is impressive. It is unfortunate that we are unable to acknowledge this in person, but I hope that everyone at this graduation has the opportunity to properly celebrate this accomplishment. Please keep, please keep in touch with me and your other professors in the department and let us know where you end up and what you end up doing with your degree, because I think there is a lot of talent in this class. I am so excited to find out what you are going to, to be able to accomplish, and I want to once again congratulate all of the chemistry majors. Well done, chemistry class of 2021.
Congratulations, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to my parents who have supported me and I couldn't have done this without them. Happy graduation. There have been many people who have helped me in both big and small ways throughout my time here at CU. I would like to thank the chemistry department and in particular, Professor Dukovic, Katie Schulenberger, Professor Marshak, and Laura Maurer for supporting me with my research. I'm also very grateful to have had the opportunity to take so many excellent chemistry courses. I would especially like to thank Professor Brown, Professor Palmer, and Dr. Larson for making these courses extra special. I'd like to thank John and Jan Locker for their generosity in supporting me with my college tuition and Deborah Files for helping me with many scholarship applications. Finally, I would like to thank my friends and family for their unwavering encouragement. It's really my great pleasure to introduce Jingyi Wu's research accomplishments. Jingyi's honor thesis research involves the design, synthesis, and mechanical and thermal property study of a novel reprocessable and reheatable network polymer called Ionic Covalent Depot Network, or ICANN. As it is well known, plastics pollution has become a pressing global issue with ever-increasing population and economic growth. Plastics are generally non-degradable and could remain in water and soil for years without decomposition. To solve such challenging problem, developing novel polymer with recyclability while maintaining good mechanical properties represents a promising solution. Jingyi's research is focused on the use of a new, robust metastasis chemistry to achieve reprocessability, reheatability, and recyclability in network polymers. We believe that the discovery of such catalyst-free chemical transformation will open new possibilities for the development of environmental-friendly green polymers and their potential applications in many fields. Jingyi is a valuable team player, and she will start pursuing her PhD in chemistry in this fall semester. And I sincerely wish her great success in her future endeavors. Congratulations, Jingyi. It's my great pleasure to introduce Chiu Cheng Xu's honor thesis work. Chiu Cheng's thesis research involves the synthesis, structural characterization, and the gas adsorption study of a normal covalent organic framework, also called COF. COFs are crystalline porous organic polymers connected by covalent bonds. They have widely been used in gas storage and separation, catalysis, and energy storage. Chiu Cheng's research is focused on the use of a ship persistent microcycle, namely Kikubatio, as a well-defined pre-porous building block to construct a normal, robust porous organic polymer. The obtained porous materials exhibit high chemical stability, good surface area, and unusually high gas absorption even at room temperature. We believe such a bottom-up microcycle tool framework design will enable the synthesis of a series of novel porous organic materials with great potential in molecular separation and catalysis applications. Chiu Cheng is open-minded and very easy to work with. She will start pursuing her PhD degree in chemistry in this fall semester. I wish her all the success in her new chapter in grad school. Congratulations, Chiu Cheng. It's my great pleasure to recognize the outstanding graduating seniors who have won awards. This year, the American Chemical Society Honorary Award in Analytical Chemistry goes to Michelle Leach in recognition of aptitude and achievement in analytical chemistry. The award consists of a personalized certificate and medallion, as well as a one-year membership in the ACS Division of Analytical Chemistry. The American Chemical Society Honorary Award in Inorganic Chemistry goes to Waseif al Kashram in recognition of aptitude and excellence in inorganic chemistry. The recipient will receive a certificate and letter of commendation from the chair of the Division of Inorganic Chemistry. The American Chemical Society Honorary Award in Organic Chemistry goes to Jingyi Elisa Wu in recognition of significant aptitude in organic chemistry. 
The award consists of a letter of recognition from the ACS Division of Organic Chemistry, a certificate signed by the division chair, and an affiliate membership in the division. The American Chemical Society Honorary Award in Physical Chemistry goes to Nina Puleo in recognition of demonstrated scholastic aptitude and a significant aptitude for physical chemistry. The award consists of a certificate and a one-year complimentary membership in the ACS Division of Physical Chemistry. The American Institute of Chemists Award goes to Neve Brown in recognition of a demonstrated record of scholastic achievement, leadership, character, and professional promise. The award consists of a certificate, student affiliate membership in the American Institute of Chemists, and an online subscription to The Chemist. The Royal Society of Chemistry Certificate of Excellence goes to Brianna Hopper and is given by the Royal Society of Chemistry in London in recognition of exceptional achievement in the chemical sciences and related research. Brianna will receive a digital certificate and an online subscription to Chemistry World. And now, Dr. Jackie Richardson will conclude our commencement recognition ceremony with the Norlin Charge. Before I read the charge, I'd like to describe Norlin's achievements in a little more detail. Dr. George Norlin served as the president of CU from 1919 to 1939, probably the most beloved and admired of CU presidents. He oversaw the implementation of Charles Clowder's iconic architectural designs for the campus watched the student population triple to 4,500 students, and completed a $4 million building program despite the difficulties of the Great Depression. But it was Norland's dedication to humanity that established his greatest legacy. In 1922, the Ku Klux Klan took control of the Colorado legislature. They demanded Norland fire all Catholic and Jewish faculty in return for continued funding from the state of Colorado. He refused, saying, We can, perhaps, afford to play politics with many things but not with education. The university survived four years on a shoestring budget until the Klan lost control of the legislature and governorship in 1926. Norland's commitment to the betterment of the people who comprised CU helped contribute to the long-term successes of the university today. In keeping with tradition, we conclude our program with an excerpt from the Norland Charge. You are now certified to the world at large as alumni of the university. Commencement does not mean, as many wrongly think, the breaking of ties, and the beginning of life apart. Rather, it marks your initiation in the fullest sense into the fellowship of the university, as bearers of her torch, as centers of her influence, as promoters of her spirit. The university is not the campus, not the buildings on the campus, not the faculties, not the students of any one time, not one of these or all of them. The university consists of all who come into and go forth from her halls, who are touched by her influence and who carry on her spirit. We welcome you into the fellowship. We bid you farewell, only in the sense that we pray you may farewell. You go forth, but not from us. We remain, but not severed from you. On behalf of all the faculty and staff of our department and the university, congratulations on your outstanding accomplishments and best wishes for all that you undertake. May you all farewell. Thank you for being with us today. This concludes the Chemistry Department's recognition ceremony for the spring.